Hey there, it's Brittany and I am back with a tutorial today featuring some beads I got from Sam's Bead Shop. At the beginning of 2023, I went to the Tucson Bead Shows and I saw Sam at one of the shows and we started shopping together and then we came up with this idea to put some palettes together and the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> so one, this is one of the palettes that we chose and he's having a live sale today. It's um, January 23rd. If you've missed the live sale, you can still catch the recording on his app, the Sam's Beach Shop app or his website um, and see which items are still available from the live sale. Hopefully you can get your fingers on some of these beads because they're so yummy. <laughs> My first and obviously favorite is this strand of Magnesite. I can, almost couldn't believe that it was magnesite because it looks so much like turquoise. Um, it's so, so pretty. And they're beautifully faceted cubes. I just, you know, you know me. Obviously, this is going to be in my color palette if it's something that I'm choosing. Next um, was a strand of banded agate. I've already kind of taken this strand apart, so sorry um, for it being not a full strand on camera, but it's so beautiful. It's almost like a carnelian color, but it's just banded agate and it has some white and some orange and reds and it's so, so pretty. And it's another um, cube, which typically I wouldn't choose to use two, two, two cubes together, but the colors looked so nice together that it was just, I feel like they were made for each other. So we have those banded agates. I've got a bunch of them here. Another is um, a focal bead. They're these Z agate beads, and they're in like a vase shape. If you know me, I'm obsessed with vases. I, I've been making my own vase beads, so to have them in a Z agate bead in black and white with like a terracotta red and <laughs> turquoise it just makes me so happy. Um, and then we pulled out a beautiful um, moon, rainbow moonstone. Look at that. I love the flash on those. So pretty. Gets a, a pop of shininess into the palette, although all of these are really well faceted, so um, there is some shine from those. Um, and then also chose a strand of pearls because I love turquoise and pearls together, and I just feel like pearls make everything better. Um, and then last but certainly not least is a beautiful... Um, strand of mother of pearl and they're teeny tiny and they're faceted look at that and I just love the the flash on those so so fun I am going to use um, a uh, pendant from my stash on the necklace I I went through so many pendants and I finally settled on this one which I also got in Tucson last year it's super neutral but it brings out the uh, reds like the reds from the uh, banded agate bring out the reds in the pendant and the brown is you know neutral with the black as well around the edges so gonna use that we're gonna also make a bracelet and potentially a pair of earrings but um, I'm so excited. We're going to be making a double strand necklace here. So I am going to start with the banded agate and then two of these um, vase beads. I have four of them. We might use all four. I am not quite sure where we're going with that. But I really, really wanted, since this pendant's chunky, I really wanted these chunky beads to be in the forefront here. So I'm going to get all these off my strand. And then... We're just going to arrange them. I'm feeling good today. <laughs> I'm going to play with some really pretty beads. And um, and in just a little bit, I'm going to be going live with Sam. So we're going to have fun. And then in three days, I'm going to be in Tucson. Four days. So I'm excited about it. Okay, I'm going to put, um, I think, three or four of the banded agate um, right here. Typically, I don't usually do, like, even numbers but there's always a first for everything maybe we'll do five I don't know maybe we'll do three and then I'm gonna put my first set of um, agates Z agate I guess we're using a lot of agate today um, my Z beads right there um, I have some sheriff star spacers that we're gonna be using throughout this piece in copper so I'm just going to set those to the side. Um, and then I'm going to do a second layer here in the, in the inside. And I'm going to put 
my turquoise to get that pop. You know, bring your eye from the pendant up. We want our wow, like we have our wow pieces right here, but I also want some wow in there. And then I am going to get some pearls. Um, I think the pearls are going to go, I think we're going to do some more of the banded agate right here. And then I think we're going to get some pearls in there. Let me open this up right there. I know it looks a little bright on screen against these darker beads, but I promise you these are a little bit more um, vibrant in real life. And I'll, you'll see that in the photos at the end of this video. I'm going to put two pearls in. I'm not going to use this whole turquoise strand or the whole magnesite strand because I want some leftover for our bracelet. Probably get some pearls in with the magnesite and possibly some of these little tiny babies because they're going to be so cute. Now uh, the moonstone. Oh, I think we want the moonstone in the front here. We're just getting all the gemstones. This is going to be definitely a statement piece, but um, almost like an heirloom piece too because these beads are so, so nice. I'm going to put four there. We're going to rely on some seat, some spacers. Um, I'm going to start straining. <laughs> I want to um, kind of just direct with my heart here. I think I'm going to use some copper soft flex for this. As you all know, copper soft flex is one of my absolute favorite um, stringing materials. So anytime I get a chance to get that on in there, I'm going to take it. So um, I, I don't know if I've expressed this before, but I love starting in the middle. For some reason, it's just I never want to start on just one side. I always start in the middle. So I'm going to put on a moonstone. Um, let's see what a moonstone with a C, with a spacer looks like next to the moonstone. But I think I'm going to end up having two moonstones together. Actually, I kind of like how the moonstone looks with the seat with the I keep saying seed bead with the uh, spacer in between. And then I'm going to put two spacers on here. And then my banded agate. I'm choosing a spacer that's not taking away from these beads because the biggest part of this necklace for me um, is how pretty the facets are and all the different gemstones. So I don't want to take away from that but I want to kind of bring since this is a little bit brighter than the tone in our pendant I want to bring some of that color up to our beads you know what I like the sheriff star between the moonstone, but I don't like it between the moonstone and the banded agate, which is surprising to me. So always be prepared <laughs> to take things apart and test out what you like. Yeah, I like that better. I like that better. And I might put another bead here. I'm not sure. Now for a transition between my vase and my banded agate, I'm going to try out uh, the, the st Sheriff Stars again. If I don't like that, then I'm going to try a moonstone. Yeah, not my favorite up against the, which is surprising to me because I love copper and red together when I can do it. Okay, so I ended up using two different sizes of these um, Sheriff Stars, and I really liked how the three of them look together up against the vase and between the banded agate. So I'm going to do that on the other side. It just took a small one, um, a large one, and then another small one. And then I'll put on more agate. And then here I'm going to add in more moonstone. I think we're going to stick with moonstone and bagged We're going to stick with moonstone and banded agate for this strand. And then the pearls, the um, mother of pearl and the magnesite on the second strand. Um, but the colors mesh well, so they don't have to have the same exact beads on each strand. 
And I might try and do this technique right here to see if we like, like how that looks. That is so pretty. That is so pretty. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing, taking this, um, taking the sh sheriff's daughter out here, doing the three here, and then we'll have um, continuous moonstone right here, and then up here where we're doing our, our second set. So I'll keep doing that, and then I'll beat up the other side, and then we'll do that second uh, string in just a moment. Okay, I'm already absolutely obsessed with this and we've only done one strand. <laughs> um, I think this would look good by itself, but I do want to get the turquoise in there. Um, and I, you could do that a couple different ways. You could make it into one necklace or two necklaces. I am going to do one necklace. Um, but if you think, hmm, maybe I'll want to wear them separately in the future, totally just do it as two different necklaces. Um, I think I'm gonna save some beads by using chain in the back. I have some copper chain from my stash um, and I think that'll really allow me to use, to get the most impact out of these beads because I don't want the beads just hanging out behind my neck, right? I want to be able to see them. Um, and so we're gonna use some of them on a bracelet. I'm gonna set this one aside for just a minute. And then we're going to open up these gorgeous magnesite. I don't think I've seen a prettier strand of magnesite. And I've seen a lot of magnesite. <laughs> I have a lot. Um, but I think we did a really good job picking these out. All right. So in the inner um, uh, strand, I'm not going to have a focal or anything. Maybe like a, a copper bead or something in the middle would be kind of cool. But I think I'm just going to have um, some of these magnesite in a row i want some with the brown mixed in there because we have some with white matrix brown matrix um the brown ones look really like turquoise i love that and just kind of get that in there sporadically there we go i have my magnesite in the middle here i think i'm going to do a block of magnesite then a a spacer and then a couple pearls and then a block of magnesite and then a spacer and a couple pearls. So we're kind of doing the same thing we're doing here, just in different colors. And then I'm going to possibly fit in the um, mother of pearl in the back a little bit, heading towards our chain. So here I'm going to put on like seven of these um, magnesites. I just love these. They're so, so pretty. All right. And then I'm going to put on a spacer. A, a couple pearls. I think put three pearls on, maybe. These are so pretty. Another spacer. Yep. Because what we're doing here is offsetting like the white. So I'm bringing the white into the second strand with the pearls, but it's not next to the moonstone. I'm loving that. So I might even add a couple more um, turquoise beads right here to get that to move up just a little bit more. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to do another block of turquoise and um, then we'll connect it to our chain. And then I'm just going to put on some of my um, mother of pearl beads. Oh yeah, love that. And then we'll end up crimping onto the chain in the back. So I do want this um, second strand to be shorter than the first one because um, I want it to hang above this one um, without like over or like hanging down too low. So I'm going to do, that's probably a little too short. Um, probably just a couple more of these mother of pearl beads and then I'm just gonna put the exact same beads on the other side okay I'm so excited I literally just said that outside of my <laughs> outside my head to myself I said it out loud uh, I'm so excited so I am going to I've already crimped on to one side of the chain but I'm going to show you how I did that I am taking my first strand here I cut 
way too much wire but the good thing is um, you can save this wire if you cut too much off and then I'm gonna find a link that's pretty closed up yep here this is a good one we'll come around the link with our wire and then come back through my piece or my crimp tube And I want this to be long enough to come down through a couple beads, but I don't need to come through too many. Uh, and then I'm going to move everything down after I get this to come through my bead. So we'll come through these three bead, uh, these three spacer beads. fun thing about this necklace is I'm gonna wear it in Tucson I'm so excited I've, I have like a list of jewelry that I wanted to make for Tucson and I haven't gotten any of it done so I'm gonna go ahead and pull and that's gonna take the slack out of my necklace which there was a lot because I cut too much wire so we'll just pull that up and keep pulling until I've got the length between um, the beads and my chain that I'd like and then I'm just going to take my crimping pliers and squish and turn 90 degrees and squish and turn 90 degrees or actually and just squish one more time. And then I will cut this off. I didn't really check to see if there weren't any um, gaps, but you know, we've already done it now. All right. And only cut the tail wire don't cut your main wire because you will have to restrain there we go and then we'll do that exact same thing with this second strand here crimp tube um, and then come in making sure we're coming in on the inside of our chain here now this one is too thick this chain or I'm sorry this um, this beading wire is too thick to go through our um, mother of pearl beads twice totally okay we're just gonna cut it off right at the crimp tube once we've got the slack out of our wire here turn 90 degrees and squish again actually you know what I'm gonna squish that one more time and then turn 90 degrees and squish do it again and then we'll trim as closely as I can get. And you could put a bead cover on there if you'd like. But look at this guy. That is one special piece. Ah, I had so many beads in here. And I just love, love, love this color combo. Look at all the sparkle. So we're going to make um, a bracelet to match. Maybe I really feel like we can make more than one um, to match and uh we'll get started on that on that oh i gotta put a clasp on this i have a clasp right here our clasp will fit on this chain let's see oh it worked there There we go. Our beautiful double strand gemstone necklace. I love that. I mean, we could really just even left off the pendant because these stones look so good together. 
Okay, I laid out the beads that I have left from the all these wonderful strands. And um, I think I'm gonna make two bracelets. One's gonna be a stretch bracelet. We haven't made one of those in a long time on this channel, which is crazy because I love making stretch bracelets. And the other is gonna be a strung bracelet. I did grab some copper beads to go with one of the strung bracelets. Um, and I have a ton of pearls left over, a ton of these tiny baby mother of pearl beads. Um, I think I don't know that we're going to be using either one of those in these projects, but we're going to be using these, uh, the vase bead, the moonstone, the banded agate, and the magnesite. So let's get started. I am just going to make the um, stretch bracelet first. I'm going to start with the vase bead as the focal. They're so pretty. I'm going to have one left over. I think I like, actually, I think I like this one a little bit more. There's a little bit more detail in it. So I'm going to set this one to the side and we'll use that in a future project. And um, just going to see how many banded agate. I have six left. So I'm going to put on my vase. And I have my sheriff stars so, so that we're going to use those because we used them in the necklace. We want to get those into at least one of the bracelets. I think I'm going to use a different type of spacer on the um, magnesite bracelet. I'll put small, oops, I'll put a small one on, a big one, and a small one. Then I'll start with my banded agate. I'm going to put three on each side of my vase. And just like the necklace, I'm starting in the middle of the bracelet. So that's like exactly the same that we had on the, the necklace. And then I will do my three again. Then the back is going to be all moonstone. So I want to come over on this side. I shouldn't have started in the middle, <laughs> but I want to put on my banded agate on this side too. Um, so then I can just string on as many moonstone as I need. So I'll put my small, large, small in my spacers. Oop. My three agates. And then my small, large, small again. Then I'm just going to fill in the rest of the length with the moonstone. And I did test. The moonstone does fit on to my 0.7 millimeter stretch magic Ooh, that one's got a lot of flash on it i love that love that and uh we'll move on oh. there might be some that just might have a little bit smaller hole so i'll put those to the side and if, if needed i'll try and ream them if that doesn't work then we'll fill in the back with some pearls or something All right, so I have all my moonstone strung. It looks a little funky because it's not in a, sh a circle shape yet. I kept um, all the moonstone to one side because they have smaller holes. I want to be able to hide my um, knot inside of one of these cubes. So I am going to move the stars over to the other side. And then we want to make sure to stretch our stretch cord. Pre-stretch it. You can pre-stretch it before you string your beads. I think that's probably the smarter thing. I've never done that. <laughs> because I didn't think about it until um, one of my friends said that's what they do and I always forget now because I have always done it after I put the beads on so we just want to stretch and then I'm going to tie three knots or I'm going to tie three times I don't know if they're full knots uh, so if this is one this is two pull tight and then this is three we go. Uh, I'm going to take my GS Hypo Cement. This bottle is a little messed up. And then we'll just tap a little bit of glue right on that knot. And I typically let that dry for about five minutes before I cut the um, tails. And then I'll, I'll hide that in the knot. Look how pretty this is. And the cool thing is I can wear 
this on top of my wrist or the vase on top of my wrist and it matches my necklace absolutely perfectly okay while that dries i'm going to take some of my leftover um soft flex i had a lot from that necklace and it's a little curly but that's okay i'm gonna just um string and then um use what i can uh and then i am going to use my copper beads i think i'm gonna grab three of the beads from this little mini strand that i got at some bead show <laughs> I am going to string those on. I want to see what these look like with a, um, a mother of pearl between them. So let's say we start with a mother of pearl. No, we're going to start with a copper, then a mother of pearl. I like it. I like it. And then I'm just going to put on um, my magnesite and then I have some just copper spacers to go between so they flow pretty well. Uh, I'm not feeling the, the little beads in between each copper so I'm going to try and see what it looks like without them okay I think I'm going to go with this shape I love these they just aren't doing what I wanted them to do so we will start there I like that much much more I'm going to continue to string my magnesite and then we'll clamp or crimp off the ends all right, I have everything strong. If you're more less asymmetrical than I am, um, put the focals in the middle of this one. But I had focals in the middle of this bracelet, so I kind of wanted something offset. I'm just going to put on my crimp tube. And then I have a little copper clasp. And here I'm going to put the the smaller size beads up against my toggle bar this has to make it through here and if we did that up against one of these crimp or uh, one of these copper beads th that copper bead will have a really tough time going through this loop so um, our turquoise beads are much smaller and we'll have better chance of success there And then we'll crimp that onto our clasp. Squish, turn 90 degrees, squish again, and then move up and squish more time. Um, I'll move everything down toward that side of the bracelet and then do the exact same thing with the loop. And then we'll pull tight, making sure that we're not in a straight line here because we don't want it to be too stiff on our wrist. We'll pull that, making sure there aren't any gaps. I'm going to cut here to get that gap out of the way. And then I'll crimp this closed. Turn that 90 degrees and squish. All right. We'll trim off our tail here. And we have what I consider to be almost like an heirloom piece because it's so, this, this these beads are just so beautiful and mixed with the antique copper. And then we are going to cut off the tails on the stretch bracelet. And then I'll just move that knot right into that bead. It's not gonna be dry yet, but five minutes is good enough. And here we have two really pretty bracelets that absolutely go so well 
with our necklace look at that oh my gosh that moonstone i love the faceting so much on these beads um if you're interested in them check out sam's bead shop either the app or um his website and look at the january 23rd live sale now i think i think the magnesite sold out i think a lot of the stuff sold out but you can check it out get on that wait list if you can find it and um you'll really you won't regret it look at these look at this oh my gosh so pretty new favorite duo can't wait to wear these in tucson I even got this pendant in tucson last year so it's all kismet and um thanks to sam we had a ton of fun picking these beads out together can't wait to go shopping with him again this year and bring you all some new palettes for 2024 um and i'll see you soon please like subscribe and share stay tuned for goldie she's super duper cute Bye bye Ruby. Yeah, my little duty. Look at your little hands. You're so cute. Why are you so cute, huh? Yeah. You're a cutie duty.